going to be doing first, I forgot to get one of my brushes out, um, doing a painting of a little town in France called Anoussi, which is this cute little storybookish town. Um, I'll do this one straight through. It's a little piece. It's about 8 by 16. Um, I'll finish this piece, and then I'm going to pause and take a break, and then do a second piece of Milan, Italy. <clears throat> First, I'm going to mark in some quick little grid spots to help me place the piece. I'm just going to eyeball these. I'm not even going to measure it because it's not that important. And it's good practice anyway. <laughs> see how close I can get. Um, but as you can see, this uh, this is a wood panel that already has some paint on it. Like, what's that? Um, this is, if you tuned in recently, you might have actually watched me do it. Sometimes, at the end of a painting, um, I will take, scrape off the extra stuff off my palette and just stick it on a spare wood panel that I got. And that's how this one happened. <clears throat> this was just a panel I had laying around. Uh, a smaller one. I knew I'd use it for something like this. Um, so I just literally smeared some whatever random color on it uh, from left over from uh, doing another underpainting. Um, this is acrylic so far. I'll finish the underpainting in acrylic, and then that way it'll dry really quickly, and then I can do the rest of it in oil. Um, I forgot. Let me double check and make sure the stream is working right. Yes, that's working. And close that. And it looks like all the chats are working. So wherever you are, uh, you can chat on the. You can ask questions. I will. I can't look at the chat the whole time while I'm working. It's too much for me to, to handle. <laughs> um, so uh, I will glance over when I can. Um, and then at about noon my time, I'm going to be adding an Instagram stream with a band gallery who's, uh, who's representing uh, these two paintings today. Uh, so I'll be on their Instagram later. So you're probably watching on any number of channels, Twitch or Facebook or YouTube. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started here. Um, basically, I've just flung in some random color. I really don't care what it is because these unexpected colors always turn out. Uh, you can always see them through the finished painting. Um, so I'm gonna basically start honing in the proper value and I get to the end of my my tube and it does the the old mayonnaise squish as it comes out you know the end of the ketchup jar that one too um, just throwing out a couple colors that I might want And, uh, yeah, the, the painting isn't at all purple, but it is kind of fun to have some of these random colors back there. I actually might want some purple in here. Um, I didn't put these out yet because I didn't know what I was going to do yet, and I wanted to get started with the stream as soon as I could. <clears throat> yeah, I'm okay if this is kind of a golden to purple background. Maybe I'll put a little bit of transparent brown oxide. So I've got white, uh, a cad yellow. This isn't an actual cad yellow. It's a less expensive sort of other version of yellow that's a lot more transparent. <laughs> um, and then I got transparent oxide yellow and brown and then a, di a dioxazine purple. Uh, and then since we're using acrylic, everything is either wet or clean. You don't let anything dry out. Come on. <clears throat> Hi guys. Uh, thanks all for watching. Um, <laughs> uh, Hi Matt, John, and Kelly. Yeah, thanks for watching guys. Um, wake up to awesome art is right, right? I'll use a smaller brush. Just get some water here. 
Um, definitely want this fun sort of gold, not too much yellow, more this gold color. I don't want it too bright yet, I want to layer it on there. Um, where is that? It's about there. And I like these old crappy chip, uh, chip brushes I get from Home Depot because they let me do this fun, scratchy kind of texture. And I'm being very deliberate with my brushwork. Let me, I put a, I shove a palette knife back there to sort of keep it from wobbling so much. <clears throat> This can be a little more sort of this great gold color. Yeah, I think this is going to be kind of a goldy sunset here. <clears throat> and then it's going to be fading to a, a purple, I think, in the shadows. The shadows. You always have to whisper that word. That's a. That's a special word there. And I'm going to get my second brush here. Uh, this is way too purple, so I mix it with a little bit of brown. Um, so here is the shadow, shadow area. And I don't need to draw, you know, this is, this is a really simple painting. It's a really simple composition. <clears throat> it's basically just a couple large shapes. There's sort of a approaching of the dark side of these buildings. There's like a little river stream here, and then there's, you know, some buildings on either side. It looks very Venice-like, although it is not Venice. It is Annecy, France, which is where I was last May. Totally gorgeous little storybook. It's like you're in Sleeping Beauty or something. Uh, and I got my trusty heat gun today. This is a little faster than my fan. And it's quick for these small pieces. I can just blast it with the heat gun and evaporate the water and dry the paint. And see, it's already got all kinds of fun textures and colors and stuff going on in here. <clears throat> Just, you know, random colors. It doesn't matter what color it is originally. Um, I can I can adjust that later. But I like that little unexpected bits of it will show through in the, the finished painting. This lighter color here as I'm slowly bringing the value Let's see I don't want it that bright right there so I can get extra paper towels still wet I can wipe it away sometimes if I need to that comes up to there yeah, essentially there's water and sky. The sky is definitely the brightest value in the whole painting. It all it, it very is uh, it often is very often. It's so hard to talk when you're painting. Words and visual language don't always mix. Don't want to lose my fun goldy kind of color though. And then right down there is where the where you can see the water. Can soften this edge a little bit. So I'm making these values, I'm establishing them now so that when I hit it with my oil paint, uh, it will have a nice foundation of the value that I want.
if I were to paint a really light value oil paint over this dark area, it would still look kind of dingy. So if I really wanted to have that great light quality, which I'm, I have to admit I'm kind of known for, I, I'm proud to say, because it's, it's my favorite thing to paint. So I'm glad it comes across well, people like it. <clears throat> um, I'm going to use another dark color because throw some green on there. Yeah, honestly, these the colors underneath don't matter. I sometimes like to do the complete opposite color of what is in the final painting because it adds a fun drama of these vibrating colors, you know. As long as the, the value is right and the intensity of the color is right, then it totally works. Here's the, sort of, there's a building right here with a window and stuff. So there's like a, two buildings and then we see this distant, more distant facade of, of buildings. I know it just looks like a couple blobs right now, but that's really, you should be able to separate your painting into a few blobs. If you do that correctly, then you're on the right track. Cool, that's coming along nicely. Let me blast that one more time. I've done it where I've held the heat the, the heat gun too close to the painting and it starts to melt and bubble and boil the paint and the gesso. <laughs> so I can't forget what I'm doing and I just stick the thing too close. And just make sure my drawing is right, just checking I go a little more there. Yeah, I love all these. I literally just, I, this one I laid flat and splashed and paint on it and let it sort of swirl around and dry. And then set it aside, that was a week ago or so. Let's do a little more. I need to get lighter. Here and here. This is the water. And this is the sky. This needs to be extra bright. And there's like a, a house or something right there. And then I'm actually going to change palettes. I've got a different palette that my oil paint is already set up on. scratch this on and do all kinds of fun stuff. You don't always have to just brush, you can do fun things with it. He's already starting to sort of look like a distant, <clears throat> distant sort of thing converging, you know. Um, Sarah says, I own a ton of your artwork. Awesome. <laughs> a ton, huh? At least 1,200 pounds. Well, thank you for being a collector. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, and incidentally, um, if you guys want to support uh, me as an artist, um, uh, in conjunction with another gallery, I actually just uh, um, just started our Patreon page last night. Um, so if you guys want to support the gallery, you can contribute to our Patreon page. For as little as a buck a month, you can support my artwork. Uh, it's uh, patreon.com slash amazingartexpo. And, you know, for higher levels, we have uh, more rewards for different, you know, uh, you know, at $5 a month, you start to get stuff, and at $10 a month, you start to get stuff. Um, you know, access to these videos that I'm streaming um, so you can watch these literally anytime you want. Uh, otherwise, they disappear online as soon as we're done recording them. Um, we do. We're going to do time lapse videos of all these 
streams that I'm doing. So you can watch the sort of quicker time-lapse painting version of it. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, all the way up the highest level tiers we have where you're gonna, you can get um, one free original sketch of mine that I've done. Uh, we, we would offer that once a month. Um, so we're, we're really trying to make it a cool service. Uh, let me use a different tool for this, just for fun. Just a hunk of rubber. I make a lot of my own tools. But uh, yeah, this, you know, being an artist is a lot of work. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really great to have cool collectors. But you don't always have to buy a painting to support the artist. We now have a thing where you can just, uh, you know, support us monthly. And then we can work hard for you and give you some fun rewards. And then you know that you're enabling uh, me and the gallery to, to help to continue what we're doing here. To keep bringing you great artwork. You know, I do this for a living. And it's a hard living. <laughs> um, so uh, any support you guys can do would be great. And we have things we can give you as a thanks. So yeah, patreon.com slash amazingartexpo sort of a new venture we're starting and then of course these paintings that I'm doing today uh, you can buy these original paintings directly through a bend gallery if you're watching at a bend uh, on the Facebook page um, uh, where I'm going to be streaming to their Instagram in a little bit uh, but uh, yeah these will be available directly through a bend gallery uh, you can email Dave over there he's awesome he'll take care of you or uh, there's links that I've been posting where you can buy everything directly so here's our fun little, there's the Patreon page. Uh, thanks, Nick, for posting that. Um, and um, an acrylic, I use those for my under uh, painting layers because, yes, they dry faster. And uh, I can do this fun layer textury stuff where if it's oil, uh, at this stage, a lot of it would blend together and it would be a little harder to, to get these. Um, textured layery things going on. Um, I have to be a little more conservative with what I'm doing. With, with acrylic, it's totally dry. I can do. I can literally do whatever I want. Um, I can't blend the colors once they're dry. That's a, a downfall. That's okay because this is just the underpainting. I want these layers and colors and textures and things. And then this is going to be completely dry when I do my oil painting. Um, and I can manipulate the paint in fun ways because I'm doing it on a bone dry surface of all this color. I'm going to extra wet this down now because I'm going to switch tools, palettes. <clears throat> okay. So this is drying. I'm going to switch my palette out. Uh, so yeah, that's why, uh, as of a couple years ago, I started doing acrylic underpaintings, because it's, it's fun. And it is very practical. So, uh, palette number two. Dun, 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 dun. So this has my oil on it already, then I've set out bigger palette, I have more room to work with. Make sure this is on the, the, the screen nicely. I'm going to dry this a little more. So, and I got all these great fun colors and textures and things. And uh, it's hard to take a picture because my phone is being used to. I'm going to broadcast on Instagram later, so I can't really take a picture of this one. <laughs> this will be dry to the touch very quickly. But I just want to make sure all the water's evaporated. And then get rid of these. Of course, here when I'm doing other things is when I accidentally burn and melt the surface of my painting with my heat gun. <clears throat>
other mediums here. We'll get these aside. I got a whole other set of brushes. I got my oil brushes here. I probably won't need all these, but it's nice just to have a bunch set out. Smaller ones. Yeah, I'll probably use more of my little tiny guys today. I got a bunch of the same size brush, basically, so that I can have multiple colors going on at the same time. Right, let me say that's getting dry nicely. <clears throat> and I need to watch the time because at noon I got to start streaming on Instagram. You know, noonish. Basically, when I feel like there's an hour left in this painting, that's when I can start. It's really difficult to say that exactly, but you know, I do what I can. Um, okay, and then. I always, yeah, it's dry, it's a little warm. I always do a layer of oil medium just to grease up the surface a little bit. And it, it really nails those darks, brings those back to life. Darks tend to dry a little chalky. So when you add a medium like this, um, oil is very good at doing this, and any kind of oil medium will bring those back to life, make them nice and dark and juicy again. But also, I, I, li I don't like painting on them. I like that the underpainting is dry, and I can push the paint around without disturbing my layers there, but you don't want the surface to be bone dry. I would like it to be a little oily, so the paint can sort of glide around if I want. Okay. And I want to make sure I know what time it is. It's 11. Okay, but about an hour. <clears throat> so now I can just check out what I'm doing here. I gotta hydrate. You guys gotta hydrate. Sometimes you just need to look. I use a bigger brush <clears throat> to carve in the sky first. Here's where you just sort of start blocking stuff in. There's a couple brightly lit things here. I went a little too far with the sky there. Um, okay, let's start. The sky is not going to be white. It's going to be kind of this goldish, almost goldish green. Oh, yeah. And it kind of, there's a balcony or something there. So there's a bit of something right there. I'm looking off of a, a photo that I took when I was in this beautiful little town. <clears throat> Went there with some friends. We wanted a, a random trip to the countryside while we were there. So we found, one of our friends found this cute little town. Um, I can hit some of this down here too. This is actually there. There's a sort of a bridge or something. 
And there's an underway right there. I get that. This is water, though. It's already looking like something fun. Uh, hi, Stacy. Looking gorgeous as usual. Um, oh, thanks. Oh, oh, and the painting looks nice, too. Ha, ah, I see. I see what you did there. Get it? Um, now I can do a touch of, of blue up here. A little bit of balcony there. I don't tend to use a ton of paint. Um, I know uh, you don't want to, you don't want to be miserly with your paint, but I like to see the transparent layers that I've set up here. So I don't want to just cover those all up. Here, maybe I can carve out this like house or something that's right there. So now I'm sort of carving around, and then this one's right here. Here. There's all kinds of fun little chimneys and things happening down here. Maybe I can push in a little more there. Okay, this is not that tall. It's a little more stout. Okay, I think I can make that lighter too. Let's hit that a little lighter again. It's not white, but it's a little lighter value. So usually your lightest values are your most opaque paint. And I like the darker values to be more thin, transparent paint. Oh, this is a cast shadow from this thing on my easel. I'm like, what is this dark shape? Yeah, right there, there's like a dark shape. It's a cast shadow from <laughs> this thing. <clears throat> this and see I can push and pull the paint around and it doesn't disturb my underpainting I could even scrape the wood paint away if I wanted to entirely like I might do for just a little chunk right here and it doesn't disturb all this cool great texture I've got going on here uh, I'll show you guys do a little 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 close-up painting tour right now I'm gonna take the camera off the thing I'll show you what I mean. Texture. There's all this really great texture that's already there underneath. See, this is all underpainting right now. There's cool layers. You can see all these pinks and purples and blues poking through. So that's dry so that won't get disturbed and that'll stay as I add paint on top so here's where I've done already see now there's the texture of the oil paint itself on top of my underpainting so that's that's kind of where I've been coming from the last couple of years I'll clip this back on and hope I don't drop it on the floor like I did that one time <laughs> There we go. We're back in business.
trying to get it so it's level. That's good enough. Okay, where was I before I dropped the camera on the floor? Um, I really wanted to show there's a couple more brightly lit sort of facades over here. Let's do a smaller brush for those. Some kind of orangey gold. Something. A little more color. There, and this actually goes into the water as a reflection, so we'll hit that. And there's a little shadow on it, so I can maybe carve that out. And this, I'm just going to continue this down. This is the water, the reflection. Yeah, this looks gorgeous already. I'm looking at this stream here. Um, and then here's one that's a little more, it's almost like a greenish blue. It is right here. This is and there's going to be some windows and stuff. I can get those in there later. I make sure I get the perspective right even though I would like to blend this just into the water. Getting all kinds of messages and texts and stuff. <laughs> okay, so my horizon is like down here. Tough perspective on this one because all these buildings are at different angles. And there's a shadow being cast. Who is just texting me nonstop? Oh my god. <laughs> I can't put my phone on Do Not Disturb because I don't, I don't think it'll broadcast properly. And then here, I'm actually going to get uh, some window reflections. Do I want to show those? I maybe want to show a couple, but that's a lot. It's a little intense. I may or may not keep those. It's my choice. reflections in the water here. And then here's a sort of a little bit more. That's a little more red. Maybe a touch of blue. It's not so intense. Yeah, what color is that?
and then right around the edges of these there's going to be some fun glowy glows you got to do the glow glows a little darker and a little more intense color right as those edges as the hot, those bright reflected edges sort of cross over into a dark section oh there's one more like right here one more little bright highlight zing there And there's a tree up here too. Can hit that tree. That's really, really green. Take a little more green than that. Bright, bright green turns almost pretty much yellow. And I can scratch in paint some different sort of angles on the brush here. Fun bright tree right there. See if I can get this camera angle a little better, a little lower, and a little more square with the piece. It's a little off. That's better. Yeah, that's much better. Sorry about that. It's really hard to negotiate this stuff. <laughs> All right, now I can do some of those sort of darker parts here. You know, just fill them in as a general kind of dark, non specific color. There's like a little tiny tunnel right here, or something like a little archway. It's cute. I don't know what that goes to. I can make that a little darker. Maybe a little more purple. Filling this all in as a dark value for now. later. Sometimes you just kind of smash the paint on there. Here's this tree. That's starting to look like a couple buildings there. And why isn't this showing me new messages? Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Thanks, Blake. <coughs> um, so incidentally, uh, once again, this, these paintings that I'm doing today, uh, this one and the other one I'll be doing later, uh, are both available for sale uh, from a band gallery. Um, 
you can uh, email Dave, uh, David at abandgallery.com. That's abend, A B E N D, like a bend in the road. Oh, and there's a shadow up here, too, for this part of the roof. Um, and then a couple small shadows for some of these more. Oh, maybe I'll do the windows later. It's kind of changing my whole thing here. Uh, and then as we're going to get further away, they're going to get lighter. So this is all going to be in shadow. These are all these rooftops and little balconies and chimneys and things. Shadow right there. So I'm already carving out. You can already start to see these things taking shape. I love the idea. It's kind of a term that I start using is out of the abstract comes form. Out of this, these abstract sort of ghost shadows and shapes, you can slowly start to just carve out forms. And here it gets a little more warm because it's this building that's right here. It's a little more like pink or something. And then I need to go back to my sort of green. Because here's this, there's a bridge that goes across here. I did this a little too high. I can squash that down. And then eventually this is all shadow in here. And it gets lighter and more toward this golden kind of sky color, actually. And I can add more detail as I come down here. But this for sure fades sort of into this distance. Uh, and then there's, there's this bridge that's a little closer to us. And it's got a shadow on the water. That bridge might not be apparent until I do this. Let's make a little thing here. Sort of stretch out like that. There's this bridge. Pretty, pretty flat as far as the angle goes there. And then this shadow needs to come down underneath there.
use my lighter brush. I can. There's one little opening there, and there's another one like here. So a little bridge in the distance. Starting to kind of take shape here. This fades off. I guess fade that off like that. <clears throat> and then uh, let's see here. Here's where I think this needs to be. It's going to have this great glow quality coming from that distant area. Yeah, it's cool. Um, all I can do is maybe start indicating some of these windows I wanted to do earlier. So there's one up here. There's one here. Some of these will kind of have little borders around them. Put the darkest part of the windows back here. And there's a little bigger one right there. And there's a few down here. Imagine having a window that's like right over the water like this. Um, okay, this is gonna start. I gotta, these windows have to obey the perspective. Which means they have to angle the right direction. Here's this uh, little archway thing. I don't know where that leads, but that would be fun to sit here, right? So I'm keeping this value. The dark values here are not nearly as dark as the dark values here. That pushes this back quite a bit. some of these details in these shadow areas now. I can add this light part of this roof. See now that I've established these large forms I can just come in here and just slowly add detail where I want and it will just get more and more defined. But I have to do the big shapes first. There's a little roof. And these guys actually do have some little outlines around the edges of the window. And I can use those to help emphasize the perspective.
there's like a little balcony or something up here. This place is literally like Sleeping Beauty land. It's just so beautiful. Walking around at this beautiful sunset, you're like, is this place real? Like, am I actually here? <laughs> and I can always come and take my fun little fan brush and I can soften things if they're a little too hard. Push it around. Let's take my dark little tiny guy again. Do some more of these. Uh, actually, this would go down this way. I got perspective going the other direction now, too. It's basically a three point. Let's see, one, two, three. Yeah. There's some shadow from this tree, I think. Let's see if that's a shadow color. Do I have a little tiny light? Not yet. I do now. some indications of some bricks around the edge of this thing. Okay, cool. Now I can start. There's a little window right here and there's actually, let's do that, that was a shadow of a roof. Where is that? Like right here. It's not that dark though. It's got to be consistent with all the other values here. And then there's this roof going this way. Rooftop there. There's a roof here. It's a little darker. And then some cool rooftopy stuff happening up here. Rooftopy stuff. This is a roof, which would be angled a little like that. This can be a little further out. There's several little windows coming off of this thing. There's an archway down here, and there's little things happening. This is such a small painting, and there's so many little tiny things happening. I don't have to detail out everything. In fact, I personally think sometimes the more detail you have, the more stiff your painting gets. If you can pick and choose your detail. and only put it in the places that really matter. You'll go a lot farther. This could be a little higher. You're just like fixing perspective things here and there. Oh, 
balcony right there and more rooftops over here a couple chimneys see now this my darks are not getting very dark the dark and the light become so almost indistinguishable you know you know what I'm saying hmm what I'm talking about, huh? You know? I'm allowed to talk like that. My family's from the Bronx. My mom grew up on Hobart Avenue in the Bronx, huh? You wise guy? See, just a couple smushes and suddenly those are you know, those are a little bunch of little details over there. There's little windows and houses and there's one great color that I want to get. Um, it's sort of this pinkish building that's in here, but it's in shadow. It's lighter. It's lighter value than some of the other things around it. So how do I do that without ruining my value? You can change temperature without necessarily changing the value. Yeah, there's a fun little orange building that comes all the way down to the bridge. And when I put some of the like bright, brighter highlights on there, that'll really make this whole area sing, you know. <coughs> little tiny, subtle things here and there. And it actually is a little more of this light orange here and I can put tiny little indications of chimneys up there and then while we're doing this I can put a little tiny Highlight under that window. A couple sun sunny spots there. Here's underneath the bridge here. That's going to get pretty light. I can almost use white down there. To show that bridge a little better. There we go. Mocap. Hi, how's it going, man? Or, or gal? Man, you know, like, in general, like, hey, dude, could be a guy or a girl, I guess, right? Some more highlights on the water. Haven't really done the water much yet. It's it's the general value that's right, but I'm doing good. <clears throat> Guess I can start doing some of that water. Um, What I can do is start doing some of these fun reflective reflective colors down here. This orange-ish color I can start using. Yeah, 
needs to be a little lighter. This, we can see this tower reflected all the way down here. Am I on Wi-Fi? My stream is buffering. Um, yeah, it's it's the best I can do. It's my internet in the neighborhood. Um, you know, there's only so much I can do when everyone in the world is all home streaming at once, you know, uh, which is kind of the case right now. Uh, I actually ordered, um, what do you call it, um, fiber optic internet, but uh, Comcast literally said, we have no idea when we can get there, so I'm kind of stuck. Here, we're doing a little more water. Oh, it's looking lovely. Don't you want to just like be in this little town right now, you know? <laughs> um, here's the water. It gets a little darker right there. Let's look and see what I want to do here. I could do some of these fun little highlights off in the distance. Just because they look fun, I need my stick. Where's my stick? This is just so I can post my hand on something. Since now it's covered in wet paint. Let's see, there can be a, a rooftop right there. wall in the sun right there and now maybe there's little tiny little things as it just gets farther and further away as it rounds the bend here you know so once again these paintings uh, this one and the next one I'll be doing today are available for purchase at a bend gallery um, I've posted links on various pages, but uh, if you haven't seen them, you can email david at abend.com. That's A-B-E-N-D. Um, or you can go to abend.com and look up my work, Christopher Clark, uh, because that there's a listing for these paintings actually right there on the site. You can buy them right, right now. Um, before they're even done, you can call dibs. Kind of fun, right? Uh, and then also we're starting a, a Patreon page um, that's not affiliated with the band. Uh, that's myself and uh, the Incredible Art Gallery. Um, well, uh, at this point, it were it's it's different company. It is now called the Amazing Art Expo. So, if you want to follow us and support uh, me as, as an artist and my work, I have a Patreon. It is Patreon.com/slash/AmazingArtExpo, and you can support me for as little as a buck a month, and it basically means that. I can continue doing this forever for you guys, both offering art and streaming and uh, doing all the fun things. So there's going to be people walking around here, flowers and stuff on this bridge. So yeah, please check out our Patreon page. We just uh, got approved and started it last night. It's patreon.com slash amazing art expo if you guys just want to support what i do as an artist of course you can buy the paintings that's of course an easy way to support too but 
Uh, if you can't afford an original painting, um, you can support me for a buck a month. And then we have higher tier subscriptions, which come with cool rewards, um, like discounts on buying stuff. And uh, some of the highest tier rewards we have, you can get a, a free one of my original sketches every month. That's part of your subscription. So we really want to make it worth your while. Rather than just like throwing us free money. It's like, no, no, no we're actually doing things for you. Um, so please check out our Patreon page and subscribe if you want to continue supporting my artwork. Okay, that's a cool thing for that distance. I could do a little more for a dark window or two here and there. I'm almost getting ready to, to turn on the uh, Instagram stream, which I really hope doesn't kill, doesn't blow up my Wi-Fi, <laughs> having two streams going at once. Let's do this a little better. There's a random window on the side here. It's the first time I've ever tried doing a stream uh, on two different services like that, so I hope it doesn't totally die. We'll see. Yeah, you can do fun little details like this all day. It's a tiny little painting, but I got a tiny little brush. I'm ready to rock with it. archway right there. I can start picking out more details in this bridge. I haven't even done this whole area or this area here, so that's coming. Coming soon to a painting near you. But as you can see, I've got the main shapes carved in here. And then adding more details is my choice, wherever I want. Maybe that's a little more red. Here's the underside of this bridge. There's one. the second one. Cool little bridge there. here and there. Uh, now maybe I can do is I can take my lighter brush here. I can remix this lighter color of the sky. And I can come in here and do some clipping strokes to get the other side of some of these things. to yellow. So you can come at the shape from both sides. This form is a little more flat. There we go. Yeah, those little tiny carving little bits are super helpful.
cool. Looks good. Another masterpiece. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Patrick. Merci beaucoup, mon cher ami. Uh, j'ai un rêve hier soir que uh, j'ai parlé avec quelqu'un uh, en français. C'était très intéressant. start doing some of this blue from the sky down here in the water. Because we would totally be seeing that. Absolument. I'm going to leave some of those chunks of underpainting visible because I want those fun colors to show through. I might see a little more. Some of these blues here. Oh, your roots. Tu viens vraiment de Paris. Um, je, ne, je, je ne savais pas. Si, je voudrais vraiment aller là avec toi. Il sembla un très bon voyage. Une. Un très bon voyage. Justement, dis-moi quand tu veux aller et je suis prête. Uh, hi, John. Thanks very much. With guitars, of course. Oh, duh. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, take my little rubber guy here and push some of these around so they're not so repetitive and boring. And maybe what I can do also, take a little bigger one. I can do sort of this kind of thing. Some sort of slices in the water. Help show some perspective a little bit. And I can sort of smear those around if I want. Patrick, uh, est-ce que tu as visité um, la ville du Annecy? Laquelle est le sujet de ce tableau? Hein? Peut-être, peut-être non?
pretty. Thanks, Marie. Marie Danvers, are you uh, Patrick's daughter? I think I met you once at their house a couple years ago. <clears throat> okay, that's pretty good for that section. I can start moving into this. Uh, Mais dans le futur. Ah oui, c'est une ville très, très, très bon. C'est comme une ville d'une histoire fantasy. prendre par arriver ça peut-être um, trois heures en train ce n'est pas difficile ok I think I'm going to go ahead and do the Instagram thing now and hopefully that doesn't crash my Wi-Fi. Ready to go live on the old Instagrams. I'm gonna plug my phone in so it has charge. Turn up the brightness a little bit. Okay. And I should just, just because I should, just stand up and stretch for a second. I'm making good progress on this one. Looks pretty good. Gotta stretch. Gotta stretch. Otherwise your back and your neck will not forgive you. Even after a couple hours of doing this, it just starts to get tiring. So this one, I probably got another hour left, which is why I'm going to try to, try to jump on Instagram. And then when this one's done, um, I'll take a break and, you know, eat something and whatever and set up for the next painting. That'll be another, you know, two or three hour thing. Um, here's uh, the underpainting. This pile of garbage is going to be a scene in Milan, <laughs> if you can believe that. This was a test panel for a couple random things, and now it's going to be a Milan painting. So you'll see that. That's fun. All those fun little things underneath, colors and textures, help to make this painting rich and interesting, you know. Oh, your sister. Okay. Nice. Uh, Ofonte Marie, le sœur du Patrick. Patrick est un ami que uh, j'ai connu à un voyage pour travailler à Orlando uh, il y a il y a treize trois ans. Trois ans, oui. Le temps se passe très vite. Trop, trop vite. Okay. Okay, it's time for some Instagrams. Checking connection. You are now live, and hopefully it doesn't kill my Wi-Fi. Hi, guys. I'm Christopher Clark. I'm streaming live on Instagram now, as well as... I painted my hair. <laughs> as well as... Twitch and Facebook and all this stuff. So um, we're doing this live piece for a band gallery. So uh, please comment here. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit if I can. Um, 
this painting is available for sale through a bend so you all know who to hit up hit up Dave this is a little fun little painting of Anussi in France <clears throat> looks like a bunch of you guys are all joining I can't necessarily stare at the comments the whole time because um, I'm working on this but uh, please comment if you're enjoying this um, Okay, I'm about to do this shadowy section of the little city here. Now this is going to be more this color, this light, it's a little more pink and blue. So you guys are catching, the, the Instagram people are catching this about a, you know, a couple hours in. I did an underpainting. Um, and I've been poking around at it really filling in this brightly lit sunlit area and now I'm going to start doing the more shadow area. It's in shadow. Um, there, I just want to start carving in some big shapes here. Maybe a little more pink there. A little darker and a little more pink. There's a couple balconies and things happening here. Windows and such. And there's a big old giant tree like covering the whole thing right here so that's a whole lot of stuff that I don't need to paint because it's all tree well I'll paint the tree but you know see it's already starting to look like sort of these windows and things and here's this yeah, some of these brushes are getting a little beat up Eventually, when a brush starts to look like that, where it's all, like, frayed and stuff at the end, um, you know, that's uh, probably time to put it away. But for this block-in stuff, I can do it. Uh, these are brushes are a couple years old. For any more fine detail, I've got other brushes at the ready. See, my underpainting is dry, so I can just literally carve away pieces like this and it doesn't disturb my cool textury brushy strokey stuff that I've done that's an artistic term actually textury strokey brushy stuff and I gotta make sure the perspective lines up with everything You guys are all waving and joining on Instagram. How's it going, guys? Thanks for watching. Um, I'm doing this is one of two paintings I'm doing today. So this is all I got. I got all these light value brushes that I'm not going to use for a while. So I'm going to put those down and use my darker value brushes. I got a fistful of the same size brush because. It's easy to just have different colors on each brush instead of having to wash the same brush over and over again. That would just be silly, right? Here's this line. There's one there. Where is this? Sometimes you can just kind of poke it in place. I can fill it in more later. There's like a rail right there where you can walk. Like it's like a sidewalk that runs along this cool little city, little town. Okay, and then it curves around there. So this uh, video on Instagram is only going to be uh, one hour because that's Instagram's limit so I tried to jump in here on Instagram on the last hour of the painting if I could possibly even time that properly you know it's hard 
Um, so hopefully I'll get this done. If not, I'm not going to be paying attention to the time. So if it cuts off after you know an hour ish when it gets close, I, I won't be able to see that. I'm just working here, but uh, definitely um, you know hit up Dave at a bend. Send him a message here if you want this piece. Um, you know, not often you can say that you saw the painting happen live right in front of you. I mean, everybody, you can buy paintings all the time, but how often did you actually get to watch them come to life, you know? It's kind of a fun little perk. So this is um, Annecy in France, little town, very pretty. So please um, hit up Dave, at, uh, his email address is david at abend.com. I'm sorry, david at abendgallery.com. It's so hard to talk when I'm painting. <laughs> I can ramble about different things, but specific detailed information, forget it. Yeah, David at abendgallery.com. Um, and then uh, again, I've recently started a Patreon page. So if you'd like to support me and my artwork, please go to patreon.com slash Amazing Art Expo. And you can start following and supporting my work for as little as a buck a month. And then, um, you know, we have different rewards that we're offering for, uh, you know, higher subscription amounts per month. Uh, eventually to the point where we're giving away one free sketch of my work um, to everyone at a certain tier. like one free original sketch that I've done. So we definitely appreciate your support there. That's patreon.com slash amazing art expo. And then of course you can follow a band gallery for this piece and other awesome paintings. They've got a tremendous fantastic roster of artists like world-class you know like I'm I'm pretty lucky to be part of this gallery I've been a big fan of theirs for a long time coming to a lot of their openings and stuff I live here in Denver where they live so that's been pretty neat for me to be a part of that group this building around this corner now. Some little windows and awnings and things. Yeah, it looks like a little building turning the corner. So. Thank you guys all for watching. Christopher Clark of course as if you're supposed to know that <laughs> um, you can follow me personally um, my uh, Instagram and Facebook is Christopher Clark art so if you want to follow my work personally um, you're welcome to do that and sometimes I post fun little other things about my life Um, my background as an artist, I, I definitely consider Impressionism to be a big influence in my artwork. Um, I love their movement artistically and politically. They were, they were very rebellious and, uh, 
it was a lot about breaking away from the norm as well as just you know a, a style of painting the style of painting was kind of um, I don't want to say like a byproduct these guys just happened to paint very differently than anyone else at the time um, but it made it tremendously difficult for them to get representation by the sort of government controlled art scene of the time of the the salon art scene in Paris and so and these guys were exploring things that no one had ever done before like going outdoors and painting a quick little moment and they're basically capturing moments in time rather than you know, a big standard at the time was um, biblical scenes or like sort of Roman mythological kind of scenes and uh, you know historical like heroic figures and um, there was sort of a there was a very defined kind of standard by which you had to paint not only your style but also your subjects and these guys said to hell with that we're doing whatever we want and I don't think they realized what they were starting truly <laughs> Um, I really, really loved going to um, going to Paris last summer, and I went to the Musée d'Orsay and the uh, the Musée de l'Orangerie and the, the Louvre, and uh, there had some really great impressionist uh, art exhibits there. I saw. Well, post-impressionist, there was a Van Gogh exhibit, which was brilliant. Cool to see those iconic pieces in person, you know. Oh, a little awning there, look at that. A little subtle bit of an awning. So, hi guys, thanks for watching. Um, uh, on Instagram, I'm just looking over. I can't always see... The comments, I guess, I only have one camera pointing at this one. On, on all the other streams I have online, on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, I have three, four different cameras. Three. <laughs> um, but on Instagram, I just have the one. So it's hard for me to remember to come look over and, like, say hi to you guys. filling in some of these dark and I can I will come back and add more details as in this is just really still blocking in I mean I guess at some point where you transition from I'm blocking in to I'm painting details it doesn't it just kind of happens maybe there isn't any real delineation I'm blocking in for a while and then suddenly I'm painting details and But it definitely starts with big shapes. Like this whole dark area was one big dark shape. And I can carve in a few details and suddenly it's done, you know. Practically paints itself. I've used that term sometimes and it confuses and frustrates people. <laughs> oh sure, it just paints itself like magic. Alizarin Crimson on the lower left. Uh, oh, you guys are seeing this in reverse. Oh, sorry. Um, so this area here. Um, this was... I don't even know what this was. This was an underpainting with a bunch of random colors on it. There might have been some Alizarin in here, too. Alizarin and some burnt sienna or transparent oxide brown or something. 
uh, and some dioxazine purple and you know something like that. This was literally a, a spare wood panel that I splashed some paint on left over from something else. Um, and uh, I used it now, you know. <laughs> off. I have some guides on my reference that I can get rid of. Yeah, that's better. I can see what I'm doing. A little shadow. Yeah, I, I also love impressionist style painting because I'm a big fan of fun brushwork. I don't necessarily have to spell out every single detail. I find that kind of boring. I prefer to let a few brush strokes and some texture kind of tell the story. There's a little sign there. Maybe there's some words on that too. The violet above the crimson is really beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this was uh, this whole general area. I wanted to have sort of a purple vibe to it, um, as the shadow that will complement this gold of the light. You know, and I'm just painting over it, and all those purpley things are showing through. I'm not going to cover them all up. I like them. What I do need to make sure of, though, is that my vertical lines are actually vertical. I have this terrible tendency. I think that's because my brain is crooked by about one degree. Whenever I want to do a vertical line, it ends up being tilted one direction by about a degree. And then I have to go back and fix things later. I mean, it happens all the time. It's really annoying. I'm like, I think my brain is just like crooked in my head. Um, there's actually some reflections that we can see. Some of this great gold color in some of these windows here. as they get further away and then we don't see them anymore yeah so it's fun to see some reflections in windows maybe there's a little tiny bit up here even Let's, uh, let's start bringing this in here. Let's see, that's like a railing, so it means this is going to be the walkway, like here. to there. And I can always push the paint around because my underpainting is totally dry. I can use this to smush a little bit if I want. Or get some really sharp, crisp sort of lines in there. sort of this railing. So 
So again, this, uh, this painting is available from Abend Gallery. You can email david at abend.com. David at abendgallery.com. God, <laughs> don't, don't make me say anything important while I'm painting because it's really, really hard. Um, or if you're on Instagram, you can just send him a message. He's probably watching right now. Um, and then uh, on their website, on abendgallery.com, uh, they actually have a listing for this painting ready to go. So you can buy it before it's even done. So now here we're going to get into some of these more dark. I see I don't want to kill all this cool purple, so I got to be careful what I do with that. So there's like a step thing here, which I like. How does that work? What is that? And then we can see some reflections in the water. This thing comes all the way down, but I don't necessarily need to show the bottom. Um, this I might need to bring down a little more. that sort of wraps around. Let me see a little bit of this. So I love all these colors, but you can't do too many juicy colors and it just looks like a bowl of Fruit Loops. You know, it's it has to be tastefully done. There we go. Uh, and what I can do here is I can indicate some sort of vertical lines to help show. That this thing has a form. And do I have a sort of lighter? Yeah, this is it. There's like this fun little stair step thing. So someone can just walk down to the water and jump in. This little river was not that deep. It was just a couple feet deep. Like you could probably wade, you could very easily wade across it. Yeah, this little staircase is a fun detail. Thanks for watching. You're on Twitch. It looks like it's it. Wilfred. Wilfred. <laughs> um, oh, uh, Marco Licious is asking. Uh, this is in Annecy, France. This totally looks like a Venice kind of thing, but it is not actually, surprisingly. It's from a little town called Annecy in France. Beautiful little place. Um, like you're in a storybook. You know, if you ever get a chance to to go visit. Uh, okay, there's going to be some tree sort of thing happening here. And you always got to hydrate. Tree. 
tree. Well, I got the darks for the tree already set up. Now I got to do is do some lights, which I could use this same brush if I wanted. It's very grayish green. And here's where I can get some fun textury stuff going on. Without making it too repetitive, I gotta show this tree thing. And I show as it's coming down, covering this part of the building. It's really fun uh, how detailed and, and realistic and authentic you can get a uh, painting this small. This one's really great. I almost wanted to do this one really big, but I have so many images from trips that I've taken uh, to you know places. I love traveling, and I've you know I love doing these kind of destination themed paintings. I could do thousands of these. And I, and I will, <laughs> but uh, I have so many great images just from my travels that, oh, that'd be a great painting. Oh, that'd be a great one. Oh my God, they're just everywhere. You know, some of these cities you go to, these towns, they're beautiful. Every 10 feet is a postcard, you know, waiting to happen. Uh, you know, beautiful. You, you, you turn, I, I could have turned this way, you know, 90 degrees. There's another painting ready to happen. I look behind me, there's another painting. Like, they're just everywhere. So I am know been sort of doing that as a motif of mine for many years uh, when I first started painting professionally like I don't know seven years ago um, I was doing nothing but painting uh, scenes that I had uh, fr from my visit to Italy when I was there for about four months I did that for years just those pieces <clears throat> okay, this side looking like it's getting pretty done. Let me jump over to this other side and just spread the wealth a little bit. And again, fix my angles that are always crooked. Sometimes I want them to sort of lean in. Helps with the perspective. This one's not so much. I don't want it to be this tall, looming thing. Um, so I want to make sure I... I don't have too many crooked angles here. Let's do, I can do this little walkway a little better. I don't need to do the whole thing. You only need a couple indications and then you can tell what it is. That's what I love about this style of painting is you get to participate in it too by looking at the piece. There's details that aren't there that your mind fills in. So you get to play too, you know? It's not just me. You're, you're participating in the painting. You're adding details that I didn't need to add. I left them for you. That is a really, so you, you, and you know, you don't even realize you're doing it. But it, it makes the painting more enjoyable and People don't always know why they can't put their finger on it. Well, that's why, <laughs> because you're you get to play too. We're both painting this piece. I started it, and you're finishing it. Let me come in on this side and do this angle here. Sometimes you just got to use the other the other hand. Yeah, a little tiny hint of a top plane of that balcony. Okay, now let's come over here. <clears throat> Thank you guys for the likes and comments and stuff. Um, <coughs> again, this painting is available for purchase through a Bend Gallery. You can message Dave if you're on one of his one of his platforms right now on Facebook or, in, or Instagram. You can email david at abendgallery.com to purchase this painting directly. Or go on his website because he's got, <coughs> excuse me, he's got some links already set up. 
to, to purchase the painting directly, so you're ready to go. There's a window right here, and there's another one up here. <coughs> and uh, if you want to also support me as an artist, you can um, follow my Patreon page, which I just started last night. It's uh, patreon.com slash amazingartexpo. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can support my artwork. And we have cool rewards uh, that we give away as you go higher for, uh, you know, more <clears throat> for a higher subscription. We give you cool stuff. Um, discounts on buying artwork. Um, the highest reward, um, we actually, you get to select, you get a free original sketch of mine every month. So that's patreon.com slash amazing art expo. <clears throat> okay, here's this far wall. See, I'm leaving all this great purple and I'm just scratching in the paint where I want it. I've already established my value. So it's a little too scratchy at places, and that's okay, I can trim it up. It's also a little too red. It needs to be a little more blue. Maybe even some green. That's a little light. You just go back and forth. I can scrape this away. I can push that in a little bit to make it. Maybe I want to leave some of it really scratchy. It <clears throat> looks aged, you know, like the building, the, the, the plaster is crumbling. That's kind of a artifact of my, I build my own wood panels. And uh, there is some texture inherent to that process, which I use very deliberately when I'm doing these paintings. There's a little something sticking out there. <clears throat> Uh, okay, now what I gotta do, maybe I gotta come in here and push some of these things back to meet this little window guy. Sometimes you can just borrow the paint that's right sitting in that area and push it in. There's a tree there. He's got some shadows in him. Okay. I can bring those in a little further. Where it meets that building. Yeah, we're getting close to being done here. <clears throat> now I can use, let's use a slightly smaller brush to do some of these windows. There's going to be a little bit of light reflecting off of these windows here. That's actually going to be lower. As I fumble for a thousand things. I can push this down a little bit. Oh, that's got some paint on it that I gotta wipe off. Don't ever let paint dry on your tools, because then they're useless. It's very important.
it's got some mineral spirits in it accidentally. These also need to follow the perspective lines properly. <clears throat> little window right there. Look at that. You, it's a dark shape. You do a couple little marks, and suddenly it's a window. I love it. And that great purpley color is still showing through, which is what I want. I can come in here with some dark and, uh, and hit that a little harder if I want to. I don't need to a ton, but I might, like under here, needs it. And back here. show that this love this window has like different sort of levels there's like a window pane and then a glass and another thing like it it's not just flat there's a lot of different textures and levels on this surface and I can come hit this last edge with the sound effect and everything So you know that window has different levels back and forth of, of pain and glass in it. By, ha by showing that shadow sort of jump back and forth, it's really helpful. Uh, and then this is going to be a dark pane back here. And then I could do a little more shadow underneath here. Okay, and sometimes there's like little random details on a surface, just to break it up a little bit. Don't know what that is. Don't really care, but little things like that. <clears throat> oh, and there's a window, duh, up on top here as well. This one, you can see barely the hint of a shutter. In fact, I want to pull that down a little more, that shadow. Shadow. It sounds fun when you say it like that. You're like, what a dork. Yep, you found me out. So here's two shutters. We have a couple lines, a couple little slats. <clears throat> Maybe there's a little highlight area there. There's little tiny touches of things can really help indicate some details um okay this one's looking pretty good looking like it might be almost finished there's no people in this one i guess there could be little people on the bridge it's really hard to tell i can scratch that up a little bit add some sort of details uh, maybe maybe here in the distance There's little things going on like here. Maybe these could be some people hanging out. Yeah, these could be people walking around here. 
walking around on that bridge, having a little fun time. Um, am I working from a photo or memory or from both? It actually is a combination of both. I do have a photo of the place. Um, you know, I can't remember all this detail. Maybe there's some people in the world who can, but I'm not one of them. Uh, I use photo reference when I can. And uh, that, that just helps me, like, place the detail. And like, oh yeah, this house was there, and that house was like that, and there was a window there. Like, little tiny, all the, all the details and placement and stuff. But the photo, you know, it might be okay, but it's not, it's not great. I have to make the light fabulous. And I have to remember what it really felt like to be there. I, I never just copy the photo. There's tons of interpretation that goes on. That uh, is, is goes far beyond just copying the photo that I have on my phone <laughs> or whatever, you know. That would be really boring. And the photo isn't accurate. The perspective is off. The lighting is wrong. You know, the camera doesn't see the world the way we see the world. So that's my job, is to put you back in front of this scene. It's like you're standing here. I'm adding in life and detail and memory and motion and, and light and color and things that the, the camera doesn't capture. It's like I want you to be to look at this painting and almost feel like you're standing here and you can hear the bustle of the people in the distance and the the trickle of the water and you can feel this breeze and feel this warm glow of the sun you know the, the shitty photo on my phone won't give you that information uh, and you know the, the best uh, photo taken by the best camera in the world won't give you that information it'll show you what it looked like but it won't show you what it felt like and that's my job If that makes any sense. That's a good way to put it. The photo tells you what it looked like. Essentially. I have to show you what it felt like to be there. I see a lot of artists who, their painting is very compelling. It's a, a very, very perfectly accurate reproduction of a very cool photo that, you know, they probably took too, but um, it's like, it's, it's, I think it's kind of boring. I want to know that it's a painting. I don't want you to disguise it to look like a photograph. You know, you took the photograph already, that's done. Why bother reproducing that as a painting? Just show us the photo, if that's your goal. I want it to be more than that. So I try to let the brushwork speak and unexpected colors show through. <clears throat> and movement happen that I, I couldn't, you couldn't capture with a camera. Uh, okay, here's a couple things I can do. My last, um, you know, a few minutes here. Um, where are you? <laughs> I'm in uh, Denver. <laughs> and this is not Venice. This is um, Annecy in France. <clears throat> so I'm going to do this little fun guy here. This is just so I don't breathe in cadmium and, you know, chromium sesquioxide and chlorinated pale cyanide. All the fun things that are in paint. So I got this guy on right now. Woo! So I'm gonna do some fun sort of splashy stuff. That would possibly imply me breathing this stuff in. <clears throat> so a little bit of medium, a little bit of color here. I'm going to come in here. And I can spritz in some glowy glow. So 
this is pretty subtle. You guys might not be able to see this from where you are, but it's definitely apparent. It adds this glow in the distance. I can add some glow around the edge here. If it's too much, I can sort of tap it away. Paint is still wet, so I can't smudge it too much. <clears throat> I want this edge to be a little harder, so it definitely is in front. I'm basically my own little airbrush. I can do that down here. Just a little here and there, you know. Uh, I can do a little green for this tree right here. Basically, it lets me add some transparent bits of paint without disturbing the brushwork underneath. <clears throat> I could wait for it to dry and do this, which I often do. You know, a couple days later. Um, but sometimes I can do it now, and it provides a fun little stippled quality to the paint as well. Definitely don't want a lot of mineral spirits on this because it'll. It'll eat through the paint that I've already done, where it very well could, you know. But if, to me, this is a really great finishing touch. <clears throat> Can add some more color in the water. make some unexpected things happen. Increases the element of random adventure, you know. <clears throat> uh, this is oil. Uh, oh, this the mask. It's a it's a respirator I got at a Home Depot. It's like a, you know for for fumes and and particles and whatever. I forget what rating it is. It's pretty good though. Um, <clears throat> and here's something, a little tiny subtle detail I can do, and then that might wrap this painting up. Let's say that could be more clean. Oh, this is such a beautiful little town, I want to go back. I can add a couple fun little birds sort of flying in the distance. Nothing major or dramatic. Gives it a little emotion. You know, it's real tiny, you probably can't see him because it's just a tiny, tiny little painting. <clears throat> okay, and I suppose I could sign this one now. And then that could be done. That'll be about an hour on Instagram, so that'll wrap that up. But yeah, if you guys want to buy this painting, it is available right now. I could probably take this off now. Hopefully those spritzes have gone away somewhere else. Um, this painting is available for purchase um, at Abend Gallery. You can email david at abendgallery.com or you can just go to the website abendgallery.com and find Christopher Clark, that's me, um, and you can purchase it directly there. 
Um, I've also started a Patreon page if you guys want to support me as an artist. Um, for as little as a dollar a month, you can subscribe and support me so that I can keep doing this for you guys forever. <laughs> um, this is a lot of work, not only painting, but you know, having all these cameras set up and um, studying and traveling and you know, I do everything I can to be a better artist all the time. I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. Um, and then for, for the, the higher subscriptions, like five and 10 and $20 a month, we have more fun uh, benefits and, and rewards and stuff. But uh, please check that out. Oh, it's uh, patreon.com slash amazing art expo. So please look that up if you'd like to support me as an artist. I don't need this. Um, <clears throat> and of course, if you want to buy the painting, that's another great way to support me as well. That's available through a band gallery. How dark is this? Is this dark enough? No, I think I'd like a different color. I was going to try to do a super dark there, but I don't think it's going to be dark enough. We'll do sort of a peachy pink something. We'll do a little bit lighter value right here. I always try to sign it so it matches the painting and it's, you know, you can find it, but it's not obnoxious. I used to do much bigger, more obnoxious signatures on my paintings, but I've I like to do them a little more tasteful and, and out of out of the way now. Hopefully it doesn't have too much mineral spirits in, it's not gonna bleed. Maybe I'll do a little more paint. Less likely to bleed off of that. Could be a little darker. <laughs> Could be a little lighter. Sometimes you spend some time mixing the right color. It's all right, it's worth it. Um, so I'm going to be doing a second painting like this today. Um, when I'm done with this one, I'm going to take about an hour break, um, eat something, set up the next painting, and the next one's going to be Milan, Italy. Another fun little piece like this that will also be available for, from a band. Um, oh, I guess I should mention, oh, I forgot about this. Uh, if you buy the painting here, um, we will give you access to this video. So you can watch the whole thing get painted, even if you came in late. You can watch the video later at any time. And we'll do a time-lapse version of it for you as well. So that's pretty cool. Not only can you own the painting, then you have a video forever of me doing it. Christopher Clark. I have a long name. <laughs> okay, so I think um, I'm gonna sign off here. Well, I guess I got a few minutes before it hits an hour on Instagram and I can be cleaning this stuff up. Uh, I can do some questions now. If you guys have some questions, I'll be watching the comments deliberately now. Um, so please comment and ask me some questions for the next couple minutes. Let me line this up again. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have for the next couple of minutes as I'm resetting up the camera. There we go. So this is Annecy, France. Super cute little town. Kind of one of those places where it's like, for the most part, kind of an undiscovered little gem. But there are, you know, when we were there, there were some patches of tourists that showed up that 
you know, kind of ruin the ambiance of the place, I have to say. Even though, fully admit, I was one of those tourists there. I was trying to be a little more incognito uh, and just sort of observe and, and watch. But then you see the streets just like stuffed full of like tourists sometimes um, who were out, you know, taking pictures and buying all the dorky souvenirs. and. Um, but uh, I was I was there too. I was a tourist. So, you know, where do, where do you draw the line? But it's still a very beautiful place. I went out for this beautiful farmer's market one of the mornings. Um, it was really cool. Uh, what was the rubber tool I used? It was a rubber tool. It was a hunk of rubber that I made myself. Um, I have considered making them and selling them as a tool. I've, I have several tools like that that I've made that I really have considered making and selling because they don't exist on the market. I've had to make them myself because they don't exist and they're really useful. So it's like, hmm, maybe I should sell that. Um, but uh, I encourage you to, if, if there's a mark that you have in your mind that you want to make that a brush won't do it or a palette knife won't do it or, you know, whatever, um, make your own tool out of anything. Uh, I've used hunks of rubber. I've used plastic bags, Q-tips, um, paint rollers, you know, pieces of wood. Uh, a screw on one a hook you know like literally anything Tr try try making different marks with different types of tools you'd be really surprised at the kind of cool marks that you can make and it gives a fun variety to your painting too <clears throat> um, oh and you said this someone said is this from a photo um, this is from a photo however I'm adding in so much more to the the painting that is not in the photo as I sort of came to this revelation today, the photo tells me what the place looked like. But it's my job to show you what it felt like. That's the difference between a photo and a painting. The best photo in the world will show you what it looked like. But I have to add in the organic, living, moving quality of what it feels like the human experience to stand there and see this place. That's what uh, you know, my particular style of painting does, I feel, anyway. I'm not trying to duplicate a photo. Um, I'm trying to show you what it felt like to be standing here and experiencing this place as a human being, not as a camera machine, you know. So, uh, I is, is a combination of photo and memory. I see any other questions on the Twitch side now. Um, you guys are commenting like crazy on the Instagram. Thanks for commenting, chatting. There's an aesthetic emotion to it, too. I agree. Yeah, there's something that a machine can't capture. Um, you're a car art painter. Um, thanks, Ilya. Thanks for watching. Uh, I've done a few um, auto pieces myself many years ago. Um, it's a cool subject. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wash these brushes off because these all have the wrong colors on them for the next painting, probably. can just do them all at once. So, yeah, I think we're about hitting the hour on Instagram. So I'll say, you know, farewell because it'll probably cut me off after an hour. So I'm Christopher Clark. Thank you guys for watching. Um, please follow me online. My Instagram is... Oh, there it went. Shit. <laughs> it just died. Um, we're going to share to story. So that, that's on a bend now. Um, but uh, yeah, my Instagram is Christopher Clark Art. Same thing with my Facebook. Um, you can subscribe to me on Patreon to support my work at patreon.com slash amazingartexpo. And, of course, uh, follow Abend. Abend Gallery is their Facebook and Instagram. And if you want to buy this painting, um, just email david at abendgallery.com. Um, or you can go to 
there's there's links everywhere to buy this piece or just go to a bend gallery and search for christopher clark that's me and this there's a link to buy this painting right there and we'll even include this video for you okay so those are clean you can start fresh with the next painting which will be you know an hour ish <clears throat> it's about one. So I was my goal was to start the next piece at after an hour after I finished this one. So that could be about two. So I'm starting to get bombarded with texts and messages and stuff, so um, I'm going to go ahead and sign off now, and I'll come back on uh, in an hour about you guys. If you're following us on whatever platform you're watching, you'll get a notification. YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, um, there Periscope, and there's one more that I can't remember. <laughs> there's so many platforms. All the streaming, all the time. So, uh, okay, cool. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys in about an hour.